Well guys, you asked for it, we're doing it. A little Q&A, something different. But of all days I do it, on a bloody Monday. Just done legs, so we see me fidgeting about, but obviously you know why. But let's get to it, hope these questions are fun. I haven't seen them, but Jay's gonna read them out and let's go from there. Right, first one, how to build muscle as a teen without any supplements? Well, they're all serious right away, aren't they? I know, straight in, man. <laughs> serious? For the teens. Build muscle, mate. Consistency, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day. <clears throat> Just eat enough protein, enough carbohydrates, keep it clean, but at the same time, enjoy life. You know, a little bagel, yeah. A McDonald's, someone's not going to hurt you. You know, but make sure you're eating healthy food. You know, you're eating good fats, steak, salmons, you know, you're eating your chicken. It's just consistency. You're not going to say, you're not, you're not going to see it in two, three weeks, just time and time again. Put the work in and things will change. Go on. We're getting there, lad. Getting there. Next one. <clears throat> it's a trend one. Go on. A little bit of trend. How much training can I take before putting my kids in a wheelie bin and chin and misses? <laughs> Put them in the wheel bit anyway, innit? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'd say. Uh, but for me, everyone knows I love I love the orange stuff. Um but I don't get that whole road the road rage, it's not my it's not my thing. I've never had it. Probably because I've always been an angry individual anyway, so I don't think I notice it. You know right now, you know, I'm hovering between what, seven, eight, nine. Probably roughly about a gram a week. Um, that's me, I'm not saying do that, I'm not, but that's where I'm at right now, roughly. Um, my kids are in the wheelie bin, you know, <laughs> and she's not, she's not in a morgue yet. <laughs> but uh, so I say, for me, the sweet spot's a gram. <laughs> what do you think about people leaving coaches? Oof, well, everyone is coach shopping. There's always a new, you know, a new flavour each year, isn't it? a new flavour, a new sauce. You know, we've seen Milos have his time, Patrick Chaw, Aceto, everyone's going to Stefan now. Um, and I think you should be able to go to whoever you want. You know, these you know social media influencers and these YouTubers make a big song and dance about it. When you see footballers changing physiotherapists and nutritionists, no one cares. So what's it got to do with anyone if you change coach? I don't see the big issue about it. But in this sport, everyone's got a bigger opinion. And I think their opinion matters. And then if you leave a coach, you're, you're a user and you're wrong. Why? If you're paying that coach, people say, oh, pros don't pay the coach. They mightn't pay them financially with money. But if you're if a pros with a certain coach, that coach is getting athletes off that person's name. So in a way, you are paying them. Or you, you, know, you give your coach a certain percentage of your winnings or you buy them gifts or whatever. So for me, you can go with whoever you want, in, in my eyes. I don't, I don't know why there's a big song, big song and dance about it. Let everyone, let everyone do their own thing. I like it. See, lad, just spitting the truth, mate. Spitting fire. <laughs> How anabolic is your headband? A hundred percent. Well, <laughs> people ask about the headband, right? And as you can see on pictures, I've got a bit of a slow eye. Mm. The eye is not slow. It's just because I've had that many operations on my eyelid. There's no skin no more holding the eyelid together. And that happens because I've got long eyelashes and then obviously the dust and the sweat goes into my eye and I get eye infections. So that's why if you see me, please don't shake my hand. Just do a fist pump and when I sweat, I wear a headband so the sweat doesn't go into my, eye, into my eyes and I get an infection. That's why you always go, what's happening? Fist pump. Somebody don't shake my hand, I've got to do it, but please give a fist pump. Just out of respect for the for, for the bog eye. <laughs> What do you think about Nexilla and Samson going over to Oxygen? Um, I knew they were going a few weeks ago anyway. You know, um, I heard it in the pipeline. Obviously, your boy does things first, as always, you know. <laughs> um, but, you know, I think Nexilla, don't know, he doesn't talk English. Um, I don't think anyone in Kuwait talks Spanish. Don't know why he's going there. I think Asgard's coaching him, I believe. You know, good on everyone if he wants to go there. <laughs> Maybe a bit by himself, you know, and he, he mightn't like it, I don't I don't know, but it is what it is. I'll come up against him at the Dubai show. I'll more than likely kick his ass, you know. He's got the neck, I've got the body. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Well, as a Samson, I think Samson's there with his wife. I think she's coaching him, and I think he's just there to promote the show and to, you know, see what it's like. About him training an auction for good, I can't comment because I don't know what Samson's doing. I uh, speak to him now and then, and I said to him, welcome to Q8. He said he likes it. It's a nice city, so we see what, what goes from there, really, but east of their own. Did you also see that uh, Samson has blocked... Dennis James and Milos on Insta. <laughs> I, seen on the podcast I don't watch the podcast to be honest because they're like an hour and a half long and they're a bit of a pain in the ass. I watch Joe Rogan and a few business podcasts, but uh, the body of the ones I don't, to be honest. But I did see it on Instagram. <laughs> I thought it was quite funny, to be honest. <laughs> I, had to, I had to laugh. I don't know why he's blocked them. Uh, but that's obviously with Samson, whether something's been said. If something has been said, can you let me know down below? And the time it got said, so we can I can have a listen to it, please. But <laughs> it's quite funny. I hear that. But Samson has his own reasons. Obviously, you know he's a he's a nice he's a nice fella. So I think something has been said. If it hasn't been said, then as Dennis said, he's got five other accounts, so we can still sleep <laughs> on him. I guess you know Dennis then is a part of MI five. I guess. <laughs> the uh, Empro Alicante show. Are you competing at it? No, um, I'm not doing it this year. Um, not, I haven't got a bit of taste in my mouth from last year I haven't got a bit of taste but I'm not doing it I will be doing Italy going for Italy again and I will be doing the Dubai Pro 100% but right now I'm thinking about putting my feet in the water and doing the Portugal show try something different for that a different load so you might see me at all three shows more than likely I'll be at all three shows and why not? Money's money, right? Get the My bodybuilder got to compete, baby. Got to feed them kids before they go on the wheelie bin. With the uh, the Milos thing, what do you think about the Patrick Tour drama and him? Oh, I, watched, I did watch that one. I watched yeah. the Patrick Tour one. Um, right, so you can look at it both ways, really. I don't think Patrick's a liar, because I know Patrick is a nice fella. <clears throat> I don't think Milos is a liar. Even though Milos always says his athletes beat me all the time, but he don't. Uh, I don't think Milos is a liar, I don't. I think there's just communication error really because I've been in the same boat before, right? To where I've been coached by someone but then I've asked for information on someone, somebody else and information's good because we're always learning, we're all bodybuilders, right? So we're all learning different things and new techniques but I think Milos has thought he was coaching Patrick but Patrick just thought he was getting information and you know because to coach someone, I think you have to be there, you know, from the start to the beginning of prep to say you're coaching them. But so you've got to respect Patrick for you because he's, he said, you know, I got information from you, just learning from you. And information you've given me, I've not actually um, used it. But then Milos, as way, he said, well, I'll give you the information, so I'm coaching you. And I've been there myself when I've asked for, for certain carbs for people, you know, I won't name any names, but pointless, but. You know, I've asked how do you call, what do you use this for and what do you do it for? Pairs and people, like, oh yeah, you know, this and that. And it's just information. So they're both right in what they're saying. And also they're both wrong. I think it's just a uh, miscommunication of things, really. Yeah, fair one. Yeah, bro, you know me. Being politically correct now, aren't I? I see that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Couple of uh, would you rathers. Go on then. Would you rather give up shagging on food? Well, I give up food because I still eat a bit of, you know. <laughs> I still, so I trust there, you know. I love a bit of, a bit of bacon there, a bit of slapping on. <laughs> yeah, no way. Uh, so I think I'd rather give up. I give rather give up food. <laughs> Would you rather suck a dog off or spend the night with purple Aki? Well, can I wait? <laughs> one either would you? <laughs> You'd probably have Aki, probably squat an Aki or get a bum by Aki. Uh, for you guys who don't know who Purple Aki is, he's like this um, this big six foot seven black as Days of Spades guy and he's massive who loves me who, who loves bodybuilders and loves asking lads can he can he squat him? <laughs> but I know I know the dark one personally. Uh been to jail with him. He was alright, he's dead intelligence. He's nice to me, the dark one. He's funny. I think he gets off on, on people being scared of him, but oh, fuck it, I'll make two of the fuck. I think I'd rather spend the night squatting purple Aki. <laughs> <laughs> Last one there is, would you wipe 
front? Would you rather weigh front to back or back to front? You have to weigh front to back, don't you? Put the shit up, otherwise I'm gonna have a fucking shit in me gooch. Who wants to lick? Who wants to lick a shitty gooch? <laughs> Get some me sweet come out of there, lads. <laughs> what is better for growth, heavy and less, or lighter and more? Yeah. Boring body will. Boring body will catch that in it. Um, it. I think it goes off the individual, really, to be honest. For me, because I lift heavy, I believe I lift heavy, and I believe I do numbers as well. So, for me, it's a bit of both, really. Um, so, it depends who you are. Um, but I, I like to lift heavy, mate, and I believe for me, as an individual, and the lads we're trained with, heavy for, you know, roughly eight to ten reps. I believe that's it because if you can't do no more than fucking eight then get a logbook and start writing down fucking overload and two reps and all that bullshit, you know? <laughs> what time of day do you take HGH? For me, um it's the best time I'm taking GH in the morning. Um and then it's obviously I try and split the units up into three sections. So I was on six units that do two in the morning, two post workouts, we just farted. Two post workouts and then uh, two pre bed. Um, that way, it's always in, always in the system, always in the body. Um, over the years, that's what I've found is way better for me, and that's what I have my lads doing. Sweet. Pre or mast? Uh, I'd say primo. It's a better comp. It's a better compound. Um, better compound. Stronger compound as well, and I gain a lot more from it. But with Primo, you reach that. If people think you put too much in, you're gonna keep getting the gains. But what I've known and what I've learned myself, once it gets to 500, 500 meg, 600 meg, you stay there. So even though you wanna put seven, eight, nine hundred in, it, you're not getting nothing more from it. I think 600 is like the sweet spot, the max. Cause you're not gonna keep you know you're not gonna keep going up and up and up and up, which you think you are. I think once you get here, you just you stay there. So I prefer I prefer primo in the off season. What do you think about everyone copying your coach? I know, like I said before, I set trends, don't I? Going to QAs and now <laughs> coaches. Um, you know, for me, you know, that's each to their own. And I took I won't say I took a gamble. I believed it, I believed in Steph, I went with him. And I think people think that because one person does well. Everyone does well, you know, when you see it time and time again, like somewhere before with coach jumping right, there's a flavour, there's a flavour of the month, flavour of the year, and everyone goes to that flavour and they think that person's gonna work for them because it worked for Joe Bloggs and Sean Smith and so and so. But that's not that's not the case, you know, you've gotta give the coach time, you've gotta learn your body, he's gotta know what you like because everyone's different but they're all copying me because you know 11 times champion and he doesn't want 11 pro wins mate you know what i mean <laughs> with the topic of coaching yeah your teammate is yeah he's put a statement out saying that he's going to be the guy to take sebum's crown what do you think about that confident like you know he is, a conf he is a confident guy, um, you know, he might think that, but let's be honest, bodybuilding's a, you know, a sport where if you're in the limelight, you're in the limelight, right, and can't, can you see anyone knocking, apparently, the king of um, men's classic physique? No, you know, I can't see it, even though I think it is brilliant, it's got a great physique, and I believe, you know, he could be Mr. Olympia one day. Don't believe anyone will, will beat Seabum. No. The only person who's going to beat Seabum is himself. When he retires and says I can't be asked no more. If he goes for another seven years, I believe, even if even if he drops 10%, they'll still give him it. So, you know, it's yours is confidence. I like that in him. But will he beat Seabum? I don't know. Possibly give him a run for his money. But, you know, it's... I think he's the boy, in he? So, hopefully he can beat him. I'd like to see him beat him, but it's a far shot. Did you see the rough diesel called him out on that statement? No, what did he say? He said, how are you going to beat Sebum when you you just lost to the seventh place in the <laughs> deal with Wesley? 
Well, he did beat Ruff these, didn't he? <laughs> he did beat Ruff. <laughs> so was Ruff. He did beat you, bro. So how are you gonna beat? How are you gonna beat some if you can't even beat yours? Who Wesley beat, and then who's gonna beat Seabum? So it's but it's good, isn't it? It's a bit of a bit of drama because these classic guys and these men's physique, they're all golden boys, aren't they? They're all pretty correct. They're all nice on social media. Some of them are boring as fuck, but they're all pretty correct. You know what I mean? And they all wanna be oh, Mr. Nice Guy, but a bit of beef is not um enough. Not a bad thing for the sport to be funny. It's showing, showing personality in it. Spice it's showing it. charisma and you know a bit of spice in there, mate, and a yeah. bit of fight. What's your favourite cardio to get ripped? Oh, mate, I'm a lazy, lazy individual. I just do recumble on bike. Get in the morning, 6.30, get on the bike and just fall asleep. <laughs> because, you, you know, people want to do Stairmaster. Only big fatties do Stairmaster. And if you want to lose your legs, do the Stairmaster. But what one thing I learned, from Matt Jensen, I'll always take this, you know, Matt's always said to me, it's about raising your heart rate. Not, it's not about getting, being sweaty and, you know, soaking, soaking right through, but raising your heart rate. And we can do that on the recumbent on bike. I don't want to lose my legs because when I'm on a stairmaster, I'm having to hold my body up these stairs and, and you know, at 130 kilo, it's heavy to hold your body and walk. So, raise my heart rate, recumbent on bike, absolutely ideal. Or the upright bike, you know, to get a bit more, a, bit, a little bit of a sweat on, and push, you know, push a little bit further. But for me, since you know, but since I've known Matt, I'll always, always do the bike. Sweet. What's your thoughts on Air Debu and the advice he's putting out? Fucking bloody hell! Don't swear, Air Debu. Eh? You see this all the time. No disrespect, Daddy. You've been here. You've done it yourself. You're talking like you've never done nothing. You know, you're saying, surprise, you haven't said you're, nat you're a natural when you're a pro bodybuilder. You know, but Eddie was the, probably one of the worst for it. Eddie's only talking, it's not, not just Eddie. He's, he has had to do what he's done, this diet, because he had his own health issues, right? So I'm told and so I know anyway. And it's, what I think he's preaching is unhealthy. And I'm not the only one, Greg Fouchette thought that. The guy who eats food, he's always calling out things that. Everyone thinks that. I think it's these people who, you know, don't know much about dieting, believe what Eddie says. And they're giving him some platform. But what he's saying is absolutely dangerous to people. You know, you might sit here and think, oh yeah, Nathan takes the piss all the time and he's never serious. But on this matter, mate, what he's preaching is actually, is actually dangerous. You know, it's about a balanced diet. Meat, 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 meat. Yeah, you gotta have carbs. You gotta have your vegetables. Have everything. You need all sources, you know. And believe me, if you're 25, 27, you know, or whatever age, 40s, if you wanna go for a, a curry here or there, or you wanna take a burger, things in moderation are not gonna harm you. They're not gonna harm you, right? He's taking this approach to be different. Same people with log books and stuff. They wanna be different and and know things that they, they know more than, than others, but they don't. So in regards to that, I think he's making money from it. You know, he's got a platform, but would they ever, would they ever give him the time of day on this subject? No. Do I believe what he's saying? No. I think it's garbage. And he's being himself. He was probably one of the biggest abusers of supplements on the on the board in the UK. But Eddie is his, Eddie's his own person. And um, if you want to believe him, go ahead, believe him and live your life worse than a monk. <laughs> <Isn't it? laughs> yeah. What's your favourite toys? Um, I just seen the other day I'm into you know motocross. Uh, you, you follow me on social media. Got my kids on the quads. Got my youngest boy. Got my only boy. <laughs> my only, only lad trying to let, trying to ride. You know, um, a Raptor seven hundred. He's on his he's on his own quad. A bit small, a bit short. Not for him. He said. So we're trying to learn him with the clutches on the on the seven hundred, and hopefully soon to be with his dad. On the roads, you know, having a fun time. Right now, I'm into, I'd say, motocross, um, watches, I think. LV trainers. LV, I'll, LV trainers were last year. I was into LV last year. That was with a, that was, that was a Stefan thing that you could, you could get the most LV. But two years, I'm into motocross, um, and obviously, you know, just, just fun, fast things, things I couldn't have when I was a kid is what I like, is what I like now. So, moto quads, crosses, watches. Me and the boys going out, putting them in the van and just having just having a fun time. And this summer, when we're back from these shows, I think we'll get some more motocross, put them in a container and just 
boys and toys, eh? <laughs> Do the elbow sleeves allow you to lift more or are they just for protection? No, you always hear me saying, old is gold. <laughs> well, right now, my elbows aren't gold. So the only, the, you know, I don't wear double ply. They're just, just for protection. Same with my knee sleeves. They don't give no, no, um, no, no strength. That's why I don't wear wraps. I just wear sleeves. They're not tight. They, they come up easy. It's just a bit of protection. Keep the elbow or the knees in place. Getting old, people. 38, man, this year. Getting old, so protect it. As Dexter would say, train smart. How high do you have to push your food in the off season to keep your body weight up and still grow? Personally, for you. Personally, for me. As you guys can see, I'm a fat. Well, I was not no more. I'm coming in. I was a fatty. I loved the kebabs, um, Indians and stuff. So I'd say roughly, I'll go to go around about seven thousand calories. Stay around there, and that's a sweet spot for me. Nothing crazy. What do you think about Regan taking another year off? <laughs> um, I think it's this. Right, I think this is. I don't know if he's taking a year off for that because I'm a baby. I don't see that as a reason because he's only in this game for a short time. So I think if that's the reason, then obviously you know I wouldn't really use it. You're saying he needs to, he needs to grow, but he's, he had time to grow already. Um, you know he's losing time. He's not, he's not young no more. He's young, but he's not as young as he was. And, if I'm correct, I think this is his third year off. Second or third year oh, off, yeah. and he's been a pro what seven years, six years, six years, something like that. So time to stick him, mate. Um, you know, I think he needs to get in. He needs to get into the shows. I'm taking years off because not much is happening. You know, if 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 he took the, if he, I hope he proves me wrong. The next year he's twenty five pound every year, and then I'd be like fucking bloody hell, wipe your face there, nay. And then I would, but to take a year off. I think he's, you know, with the social media presence he's got, you know, and everything behind him, I don't think it's worth it. I'd rather just jump into shows and, you know, miss, miss the Olympia or something like that, but still compete and still do shows you can win and still keep your name up there. I think it's, that's a smarter thing to do, business-wise and for him personally. What do you think about Arnie Slot as the new manager? Arnie Slot as the new manager. I'd say let him, let him put in a police cell, no comment. <laughs> um, I don't know anything about the guy. I honestly don't. Um, I'm a nervous, yeah. Um, one thing I do hope, mate, is that he dashes Nunes, he dashes Salah, he dashes Gakpo. They're not Liverpool players, so in regards to Slough, no idea, but dash, but dash them three right away. <laughs> What's better, Trimex or Trent? <laughs> <laughs> Family. Yeah. <laughs> so if you people don't want to try mix this, think the Americans do. 50-50 <laughs> mates. Can I split it? <laughs> I think I keep try mix or training. Can I have both? <laughs> you know, I don't want to pick one, they're both good. <laughs> both too good. Both too good. Do a t-shirt saying try mix, right? <laughs> Hunter coming to Europe doing Italy. Thoughts on that? I heard that. Um, I'm happy mate, you know, won Italy twice, he thinks he can come take me crown, I doubt it. These Americans think they can, surprise you got a passport, and Americans got passports, you know what I mean? Uh, they all stay in the country and fly out on the, on the little cars, don't they? Um, I'm surprised, but let them come, you know, I hope he brings condition, because this is Europe mate, and we're known, us European lads are known for conditioning, and for size, so you can bring all the size you want mate, so if you, if you come like you did to the Olympia, it's game over, lights out. And I'll put it right out there and tell you, but you know, all you guys are probably more fans of Hunter than you are of me. So you probably like in the comments, oh Hunter's gonna beat you. But let him come. When I beat him, he's apparently top five Olympian in it. So it does say it's for me what I am, don't it? So you know, it's I'm looking forward to it. I heard it a couple of weeks back, looking forward to it. You know, I'll probably jump in the show in three weeks time. Hunter. Yeah, uh, you know, but well, I hope he brings it and then there's, there's no excuses saying, oh, you know, I was off, I was off because I ain't going to be off, mate. I'm going to be on, as I always am, and then it's game time, so bring the Americans over here. I reckon we finish on that, mic drop. Yeah, boom, bitches. What are you going to tell them? Like, subscribe, tell a friend.
See you soon. <laughs> <laughs>